My name's James and I'm the founder of Gender Community Lending Library. We are an online nonprofit postal library, which means that we send people books. And in our case, we focus on transgender books. So books which are novels of the trans protagonist or by a trans author or nonfiction books about transgender people. We specialize in getting those books to people throughout the UK. So thank you for um, having this session with us today. Um, I'm Jake, I'm um, a trustee for an LGBT charity in York um, and I've been an LGBTQ plus activist for a long time now. <laughs> so I feel like quite uh, an old person in, the, in these scenes, but I'm really honored to be asked to interview you today and discuss some of the projects that you are doing. I think I, I use they and their pronouns. So what pronouns right. do you use? Uh, I use he, him. So um, what inspired you to set up um, the gender community library? Oh, well, okay. Um, this one, I think it was a cumulative thing. Um, so we were having a lot of attacks on trans rights in the UK. We still are. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can trace the whole process through my letters to a friend, which say things like, I feel so weird living as a stealth trans man at a time like this. And I wish I could just do things for people. Maybe I should start a blog. And then maybe the world doesn't need another blog. What if I can just boost other people's voices? And then slowly it snowballs. And now I have a hundred books in my house. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of books <laughs> to have in your house. <laughs> oh, that's amazing though. Um, so um, why do you think it's important um, for the trans community to have a library? So the core of the library is our academic collection. And the reason that's quite so important is because there is this new and growing academic field. It's thriving and that is transgender studies but not everyone who's even in that field is trans uh only a very small proportion of trans people are in or related to that field mm. or reading that literature which means that as ever there are a huge number of people studying us and making their careers out of studying us and publishing mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of words and there aren't very many trans people who know what's being said so the idea of the library was that if you're one person maybe you can buy one incredibly expensive academic book. But if you're an organization, maybe you can email publishers and get a hundred books. So I really want people to be able to access what's being said about them in this context. Mm. And that's what the library does. That's excellent. As a, um, a student who's doing a master's degree, <laughs> that is music to my ears when it comes <laughs> to things like that. I'm doing a master's in equity and diversity in society, so very relevant to, do, um, to um, um, trans studies and um, trans rights. Um, so in terms of your collection, could you just um, talk about what kind of um, books you have? Sure, uh, we do everything. So it started academic, and what I quickly learned was that that is just the tiniest corner of trans literature. There is so much. So we have a novel collection that we're working on right now. I have about 12 tabs open that are publishers I will be contacting this evening about yet more novels. We, yeah. have, we have comics. We have memoirs. Um, I think you often find, not just with trans people, but with a lot of marginalized groups, that for a very long time, when we were allowed to publish books, they were all memoirs. Mm. And so there's a long history of the trans memoir, and they change over time. And I think that as this collection becomes more established, it will be really interesting for people to be able to read basically decades of trans history through memoirs. Yeah, no, that's amazing stuff, really. And you think of some of the other um, LGBT memoirs um, of um, recent, well, of which was a while ago, but of course it's become recently famous even more so. It's um, very important and shows that trans people have existed throughout history, sure. which is often a thing that we have to um, combat. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Um, so I looked at your website and did some little bit of research and I noticed um, you're doing a few projects at the moment yeah. and I would, wanted to ask you to 
talk about some of them. What, what projects are you doing? So the two main ones that we do right now are the historical cross-dressing project, which is absolutely about what you just said. It's about showing people that there have been trans people throughout history. And in particular, there have been trans people throughout Britain, throughout history, throughout the UK. So you can click on, we have a Google map. Um, I go through the British newspaper archives and I find people who cross-dressed. We can't say for Amazing. certain that they were trans, but these are people whose lives are really actually quite similar to the lives of trans people today. Mm. And so you can go to the map and you can find your hometown or your county and zoom in. And I guarantee you there will be someone there who lived 200 years ago. That's amazing. I know in York, um, which is where I'm based, um, yeah. the University of York, they've got a, a little bit of LGBT history on their website with the Brofwick Institute, it's called. And on there, um, there's a trans person from the 17th century. Oh, wow. And the only reason why we know they're trans is because they were um, seeking a divorce. So, um, and they found out through that process that they were trans. So unfortunately they ended up in prison, which is, um, which Very tends cool. to happen a lot, um, yeah. unfortunately with our history. Um, you get a lot of that side of things, but I think you're right. I think that's amazing. So please do check it out, everybody. Um, that sounds like an, an exciting project um, um, to be done and a well um, needed project because I don't think there's anything like that out there at the moment. So that's there are a few resources, but mm -hmm. I think <laughs> the thing I bring to it is a lot of free time. Uh, when it comes to trans history, that really can't be underestimated. You comb through dozens and dozens of articles and court cases, and you get maybe one one person yeah. out of every hundred documents you look at. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's quite um, a time um, consuming process in other times. Um. So um, people are probably wondering now. Um, how does the library work? Yeah. Sure. Um. So we have a big stash of books and we would like you to be able to access our big stash of books. So you go to our website and you find the book you would like. Uh, you fill out our Google form to say that you would like this book and what your address is and whether you can pay postage or whether we should pay it for you because we're absolutely happy to cover all costs so that it's completely free to users. And then we send you the book in the post. It really is quite simple. Um, we tend to give out books for a month. You can then renew. Uh, if someone else wants the book, you end up at the bottom of a waiting list and you send it back, but then it comes back to you. Um, we operate more or less but like any other library, but we do it all by mail. Wow, that's so cool. That's um, really interesting. Um, so um, on that, I noticed on the website you had also a pen pal scheme. Um, and I was wondering what, if you could speak more about what that, what that is about. The pen pal project is the second project I wanted to talk about because that's our big drive right now. Mm -hmm. We have about 120 currently active pen pals. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. So all that happens um, is you fill out a form to say who you are, what your mailing address is, and maybe a few of your interests if you want to be matched with someone a little similar to yourself. Um, and then every few weeks, I write down everyone's interests with a little code, which corresponds to who they are. I put them on tiny sheets of paper on my living room floor <laughs> and I match people. Um, and I'm probably not as good as OkCupid or anything similar, <laughs> but I think I more or less find people who would like to be friends. Um, and we pair you up and you can write. And the important thing about that is you're not sharing your address with anyone besides me and another independent person who helps me. Her name is Jenny. Uh, we're both trans. We never share your addresses with anyone else. And in particular, there are no cis people on the team. Um, it's you send the mail to us uh, and I will forward it on. Uh, so there is no point where you exchange addresses with your pen pal. There is no point where you're giving out identifying information. It is entirely consensual if you want to do that. And it is completely confidential otherwise. Mm. Oh, that's excellent. And um, I think it's so needed, especially um, during these challenging times. Yeah. Um, 
and it's an excellent project. Um, I'm sure I'm going to um, tell him, um, my trans um, friends and um, people I work with about the pen pal scheme. Um, we run a weekly um, trans and non-binary workshop, so I'm sure oh, there will be pe people will be quite interested in um, that scheme in particular. So finally, final question. Um, how do we donate? Because this all sounds amazing, but obviously yeah. there's a cost involved. So how 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 do how would we donate? Oh man, I, I, I hope I get this right. It is www.genderlibrary.co.uk slash contribute. And that gets the link to our PayPal. And also you can just email if you have a book to give. Sometimes people say, you know, I've got these five books in my attic. I don't read them anymore. Would you like them? The answer is almost always yes. We'll give you our address. <laughs> you can just send them on. Ah, oh, excellent. That's really good. Um, so um, I think that's all my questions. Is there anything um you want to add uh, to talk about? Yeah, there is one last thing I'd like to say, which is just that people often say that there's no trans literature, or that it's impossible to find books about people like them. And the one thing I've learned is that that isn't true. There may be very few trans books, but there is a growing pool and once you start checking out independent publishers there's actually lots we can mm. put you into contact with these books we can get them to you the issue is finding them and that is what a library is for we have the resources we're here to connect you with them oh that's excellent well thank you um for um coming and having this discussion with us thanks so much thank you